We will now study the absolute value function, which can be defined as a piecewise function. It is the function absolute value of x is equal to x if x is greater than or equal to 0, and negative x if x is less than 0. So if x is greater than or equal to 0, then the absolute value function just spits out that value. However, if x is less than 0, the absolute value function will multiply by a negative 1 and then spit out the result. Geometrically, the absolute value function measures the distance the point x is from 0 on a number line. So interpreting an absolute value, the absolute value of x is less than a means that negative a is less than x, less than a. The absolute value of x greater than a means x is less than negative a, or x is greater than a. Now, these two interpretations also hold for less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, respectively. So, describe all the values within or including a distance from the number 5. So, we want values within or including a distance from the number 5. So if we look at the real number line, and we say, let's set this to be the origin 0. I think this is a mistake. I think this is supposed to be including a distance 4 from the number 5, which makes this now irrelevant. Right, so our number that we're interested in is x. So x will be greater than 5 minus 4, which is less than 5 plus 4. Right, so the values that x can take are essentially 1 through 9, right? There's a reason why I wrote it this way, because now we can subtract 5 from both sides. And we'll be left with negative 4 is less than x minus 5, which is less than positive 4. But this is how you would interpret the absolute value of x minus 5 less than 4. So this here is how we would describe all the values within or including, so these were supposed to be or equals to, a distance 4 from the number 5. So electrical parts, such as resistors and capacitors, come with specified values of their operating parameters. Resistance, capacitance, etc. However, due to imprecision in manufacturing, the actual values of these parameters vary somewhat from piece to piece, even when they are supposed to be the same. The best that manufacturers can do is to try to guarantee that these variations will stay within a specified range. Suppose we have a resistor 
that is rated at 680 ohms, plus or minus 5%. Use the absolute value function to express the range of possible values of the actual resistance. So, the actual resistance will be denoted as R. And we know that it's rated at 680 ohms plus or minus 5%. So for the minus 5%, we're going to have 680 minus 0 0.05 times 680. And then the plus 5% would be the 680 plus 0 0.05 times 680. Now again, we can subtract 680. And so we'll have negative 0.05 times 680 is negative 34. Less than R minus 680 which would be less than positive 34. And so we wind up with the absolute value of R minus 680 is less than 34. So for the function, f of x equals the absolute value of 4x plus 1 minus 7. We wish to find the values of x such that f of x is 0. So if f of x equals 0, that would imply that the absolute value of 4x plus 1 minus 7 would have to equal 0. By adding 7 to both sides, we would get that the absolute value of 4x plus 1 has to equal positive 7. Now remember that an absolute value, what's inside, can be positive or negative. So this interpretation says that 4x plus 1 is either negative 7 or 4x plus 1 is positive 7. Now we have two linear equations. We solve each one. Looking at this first one, if we subtract both sides by one, we'll be left with 4x is equal to negative 8. Then if we divide by 4, we find that x is negative 2. For the second equation, we take the same steps. We subtract 1. We get 4x is 6. Then divide by 4, and we get x is 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. So our solution is a set of two values, negative 2 or 3 halves. And you can always check this by plugging negative 2 into the function and 3 halves into the function and verifying that you get zero in each case. We now want to solve f of x equals 1 for the function 4 times absolute value of x minus 2 plus 2. All right, so if f of x is equal to 1, then this means that 4 times the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 2 has to equal 1. Subtract 2 from both sides. Then divide by 4. And we have the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to negative a quarter. Well, the absolute value can never give you a negative answer. This is what we call a contradiction. This means that our solution set is empty. There is no solution.
Given the function f of x equals negative a half times the absolute value of 4x minus 5 plus 3, we wish to determine the values of x for which the function values are negative. So we want f of x to be negative, which means f of x is less than 0. So we need to solve for x in this negative 1 half absolute value of 4x minus 5 plus 3 is less than 0. So if we subtract 3, then the inequality itself does not change. So we'd be left with negative 1 half times the absolute value of 4x minus 5 is less than negative 3. We now want to divide by negative 1 half which is the same as multiplying by negative 2. So absolute value of 4x minus 5 Now when you multiply or divide by a negative number the inequality flips. So now the absolute value of 4x minus 5 is greater than 6. So using, this inter using the interpretations we studied before, this says that we must have 4x minus 5 being less than negative 6, or 4x minus 5 being greater than positive 6. And we solve each inequality individually. So add 5, we get 4x is less then negative 1. Divide by 4, we find that x is less than negative a quarter. Right? Or, we now solve the second. So 4x is greater than 11, which would mean that x is greater than 11 fourths. So our solution is the interval negative infinity to negative a quarter, union with 11 quarters to infinity. Solving absolute values, and specifically absolute value inequalities, does play a pretty big role in the study of calculus, specifically when you begin to look at applications of the derivative. So that concludes our look at the absolute value function.